improves animal health and food quality, reduces the need for medication and can help pre preserve biodiversity. On this basis, the Commission committed to revise the animal welfare legislation, including on animal transport and the slaughter of animals, to align it with the latest scientific evidence, broaden its scope, make it easier to enforce, and ultimately ensure a higher level of animal welfare. Uh, the revision started with an evaluation of this current legislation, the so-called fitness check. The, this fitness check evaluates the relevance of legal requirements, coherence, efficiency, effectiveness, and the EU added value of the rules. It is carried out through desk studies performed by the Commission itself and through field studies performed by contractors. Some preliminary results um, indicate that there are lacks in the legislation. And these lacks, for example, refer to lack of clarity of certain provisions, uh, lack of specific updated and detailed requirements, of tools to monitor and to measure and report, and lacks of training and competencies. And there's also insufficient and uneven information to consumers. Parallel to the evaluation of current legislation, the Commission launched several consultations and studies to receive a broad spectrum of information on the needs and wishes of the new legislation. A pre-impact assessment called inception impact assessment was open for feedback from July to August 2021. And we received almost 1000 contributions during this seven week consultation period. The stakeholders conference on 9 December last year resulted in a huge feedback and contribution also from the parliament. Thank you for this. The open public consultation had a feedback period from 15 October 2021, so last year, to 21st January 2022. Um, this, as you see, just closed on last Friday. In this consultation, we received almost 60,000 replies. Of these, uh, more than 92% come from the EU. In numbers, 55,000 contributions from EU citizens. And more than 500 business organizations replied and 266 NGOs contributed. We are now examining the results. Oops. Um, in the farm to fork strategy, the commission committed to align animal welfare legislation with the latest scientific evidence. The commission therefore sent mandates to EFSA asking for updated scientific opinions. These opinions address the species covered by current specific animal welfare legislation they also address the species and categories addressed by the ECI, the European Citizens Initiative and the Cage Age, on which uh, the Commission gave a positive reply. The scientific opinions are expected between June this year, 2022, and March 2023. Um, to give you um, again, an overview on the timeline. Um, the inception impact assessment, as I said, was open from July to August last year. The public consultation just finished uh, um, last week. It went from last October. In December, we had the stakeholder conference. And uh, the first uh, EFSA opinions that we mandated now is um, expected in June 2022. This is on transport and pigs. 
And uh, the fitness check, the evaluation of current legislation is foreseen to be concluded in July this year. And in December, we expect the next EFSA opinions on broilers and laying hens. And then in March next year, the one on calves, dairy cows, ducks, geese, and quail. In the first half of next year, we expect to have um, the impact assessment concluded and uh, the legislative proposal, as you know, is foreseen for end of next year. Now, coming to breeding issues, the current provisions um, can be found in Council Directive 9858 concerning the protection of animals kept for farming purposes. And this requires that no animal shall be kept for farming purposes unless it can reasonably be expected on the basis of its genotype or phenotype that it can be kept without detrimental effects on its health or welfare. This provision is under scrutiny as any of the animal welfare rules in the course of the re revision. Animal welfare is also mentioned in the recital of the most recent EU regulation on animal breeding. Uh, that regulation re um, regulates the trade in breeding animals. The recital recognizes that animal welfare is a concern that all actors in the so technical sector need to take into account, especially when genetic improvement of breeds is concerned. Regulation 2016-2012, um, the breeding regulation, does not regulate animal welfare as such. But the principle of that recital is a starting point for us when we give thought to how to better reflect the concerns that are connected to breeding in view to updating the animal welfare rules. There are different options to address breeding issues in the revision of animal welfare legislation. One option is to amend the current provisions in Directive 9858 that I just cited. <clears throat> Sorry. Another one is to extend <clears throat> the welfare requirements to breeding stock. Currently, breeding anim animals are covered by the rules of this General Farming Directive 9858, but the specific legislation excludes them from the scope. An example is the Laying Hen Directive, the 1999-74, that excludes establishment, uh, establishments rearing breeding laying hens from its scope. And also the Directive concerning chickens kept for meat, uh, meat production, the 2007-43, does not apply to holdings with only breeding stocks of chickens. Uh, the Commission already foresees in its reply to the ECI and the cage age that it would propose the phasing out of cages for layer breeders and broiler breeders, amongst others. And an extension of the scope to these animals is therefore already foreseen. In the Agri-Fish Council of December 2021, Denmark presented a study on high frequency of keel bone fractures in laying hens. The study concludes that this finding is likely to be the result of breeding strategies. We will hear more about this study in the next presentation. Considering this study, Denmark called to include breeding issues in the, revis in the revision of the legislation. And it called addressing not only the issue of keel bone fractures, but on breeding in general. We are aware that this needs to be looked at, but this issue is complex and we can already expect to need more data and more research. This being the case, we may not have enough elements at our disposal in time for the 2023 proposal. 
and we'll ha we will have therefore to envisage follow-up initiatives. Parallel to the legislative work, we will follow up the issue, the issue of animal welfare consequences from breeding activities through other actions. We are in contact with the breeding sector and we will take account of their experience. That experience includes, for example, breeding for less aggression in poultry, improvements of bone structure of broiler chickens, or breeding for hornless cattle, just to mention some examples. We will also encourage research, for example, via Horizon Europe. The Horizon Europe program is currently developed and it's foreseen to include a number of subjects addressing animal welfare and breeding. To sum up, we will look at the issue of breeding and animal welfare closely. This for the legislative proposal and as well looking ahead for the future. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much to you. And uh, it's really good to see that uh, animal welfare is really an important issue uh, for the Commission and that it is really tackled at different uh, levels and that there is also a clear timeline. I'm also quite impressed uh, by the number of contributions you got now uh, from the uh, consultation. So that's really a huge number, but it's very positive. Um, Nils, do you want to ask a question immediately? Is it very urgent or shall we go over to the second presentation and then I take all the questions? But if it is really urgent for you to ask it now, then uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, so then we go immediately to the second presentation and afterwards, of course, we come uh, to, the, to the questions. So um, now I give the floor then to Mrs. Uh, Bonixen, whose presentation will now focus on the case of keel bone fractures uh, in laying hands. Mrs. Bonixen, the floor is yours. And thank you for being with us. Okay. <clears throat> Hello, everybody. As I said, my name is Mia Bonixen. I work with Animal Protection Denmark, and I'm very happy for this opportunity to present this topic for you today. Uh, the case of keel bone fractures has had a high focus in our organization for the past month. Uh, next slide, please. So painful fractures, large eggs push small hands to the breaking point. This was the headlight from the press release from the University of Copenhagen that hit the Danish media back in September. And this did not go unnoticed, of course. We were appalled by the shocking information about the scope of this animal welfare problem. Next, please. Uh, this is a bird skeleton. It's just to show you where the keel bone is in the bird. The keel bone of the hen is the sternum. It is the large bone structure that supports the body and where the breast muscle is fixed. And now also where 85% of the hens have fractures. Yeah, thank you. Um, earlier, the common view on the cause of keel bone fractures has been that they occurred after external traumas. And this could be due to collision with furniture in the hen houses. And this photo is from an earlier study and where the scientists concluded that most of the fractures actually not are due to external traumas, but on the contrary, they seem to develop from the inside of the bird. On the right, oh, sorry, I wasn't quite finished, yes. On the right photo, there are fractures visible at the tip of the keel bone, and this is where 96% of all the fractures are localized. Next, please. Fractures of the keel bone has long been addressed as an important, if not the most important, animal welfare problem in the egg industry. The latest study investigated the prevalence and the risk factors of keel bone fractures in laying hens. And this figure shows the prevalence found on the y-axis and the production system on the x-axis. And it shows that the majority, and that is around 85% of the Danish hens, had fractures of their keel bones. This conclusion was based on a very large study with examination of almost 4,800 hens from different farms and different production systems. And that included, as you can see, enriched cage, the barn house, organic free range, and the parent stocks. 
the prevalence was very high in all production systems, but of course there were variations between the flocks. On top of that, shockingly, most of the birds with fractures had not just one fracture. In fact, many of the hens had four or more fractures each. Next, please. So, what increases the risk of fractures of the keel bone? Overall, the study concluded that the smaller the hen, the larger the egg, and the younger the bird at lay, the more fractures. And combined with knowing that these fractures develop from the inside of the bird, it's obvious that their bodies simply are under too much strain when they're laying their eggs. The large eggs, compared to the small bodies, break their bones from inside. And these risk factors are actually the same as some of the breeding goals. The modern hen is bred to be small in body size. It's bred to lay more and bigger eggs and to have the potential of an early onset of lay. This is an economical gain because the hen eats less feed while producing more eggs. But for the hen, it results in fractures. Next, please. This case is a wake up call. We constantly need to remember that the farmed animals are sentient beings and able to feel pain. We all agree that bone fractures are painful and many of the hens even had multiple fractures. A cast and a rest is not an option for a laying hen. On contrary, the hen lay an egg almost every day on top of their fractures. So obviously, these breeding goals must change to improve the welfare of the hens. And because of the obvious conflict of interest in solving this issue, between economy and animal welfare. There's need for political action and help to achieve this. And it also needs to be done in the EU. Since the animals are bred in other countries, this is not a Danish issue alone. A few breeding companies deliver the birds to farms in most of the countries. Next, please. The legislation should be more than intention to effectively protect the animals. The production animals, and that's not only the hens, have been bred for extremely high yields and productivity, and this causes diseases and suffering to the animals. Even though the current legislation said, as you can see here, and as Kirsten also said, uh, you uh, cannot, uh, oh, sorry, um, it's not legal to have the animals uh, in productivity with, when it causes detrimental effect on its health and welfare. But that's not the case for the hens suffering from the keel bone fractures. So the legislation does not work as intended. From our point of view, it's generally time to put an end to the large amount of animal welfare problems that is caused by high productivity in the farmed animals. The keel bone fracture is an important welfare problem that has been there for a very long time. It's painful and it's unacceptable. And as an wolf, animal welfare organization, we don't see the need to wait for further year-long investigations to act. Next, please. We all need to react to help the hens. And what have we done so far? As you may know, Animal Protection Denmark has its own label approved by Animal Protection Denmark. This label is on various animal products with high animal welfare standard. However, we find this high prevalence of fractured bones to be incompatible with this. And therefore, we are now phasing out the eggs of our label until a solution has come. We cannot recommend eggs to the consumers anymore. We also, together with the National Organic Association, hosted a major industry meeting on the keel bone fractures in laying hands in Denmark. And the Danish Minister of Food, Agriculture and Fisheries, Osmos Brain, also participated as well as the scientists behind the study. And this was the first time that the whole industry was meeting and that underlined the seriousness of the matter. The focus of this meeting was solutions and to find ways to reduce the problem through management also. And at last, we also responded to the public consultation of the EU animal welfare legislation. And here we urge the commission to regulate this area to ensure that breeding practices are improving the welfare of the animals instead of the opposite. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for um, all these explanations. And I must say, it's again um, 
a, a very cruel situation for a lot of these uh, laying hands. And until recently, I must say, Niels was the first one, Niels Fulgerson, to talk me about this issue. So it's really important to raise awareness on that because I think a lot of people are not aware of this uh, cruelty. Um, Yes, and I give also the floor first to Nils because Nils Krugsen, because he has already raised his hand before. So if you want to take the floor, Nils, please feel free. Thank you, Chili. Can you hear me? Very good. No, no, you yes. can hear me. Great. Okay. Yes. <laughs> um, well, thank you for um, for this discussion. I think it has been very interesting to to hear both from the European Commission and the and the Danish Animal Protection uh, Foundation. Um, well, I, I I was not aware of this until recently either, Tilly. Uh, and I think it's an it's an important uh, issue. Um, and I wonder, you know, according to the Dyrenes Beskyttelse, the Danish organization, as far as I could hear, 85% of the hens <clears throat> has this keel bone fracture. That's a massive amount. And um, it's of course very unlikely that it's only a Danish problem because we have similar breeding methods in, in other countries. Uh, so it would be <clears throat> useful to get some data as I also understand the commission is uh, looking into on a European wide scale. What I would like to ask uh, <clears throat> is with, with regards to the solutions. Um, the European Commission um, uh, points at uh, breeding strategies as a cause uh, of this problem. Um, and I wonder if uh, the commission could tell us something about how do we how do we address this and what is the time scale for addressing such a problem? Because if you want to change the breeding strategies, uh, well, I suppose that doesn't happen from one day to the next, but could you have some requirements um, for uh, breeding in a different way and how, how, how long does it take, would you think, if you have any thoughts on that, to get to uh, a place where you have where you don't have this problem, where you have uh, <clears throat> bigger hens, smaller eggs compared to each other, because that is the problem right now. <clears throat> I think this problem reminds me, and I you don't have to comment on that, I don't know if you agree, but it reminds me of the problem that we have with sows, <clears throat> that sows, they, they give birth to, the Danish sows, I think they give birth to average 16 piglets uh, um, when they when they give birth. And that is, of course, uh, much more than, than the natural uh, sow. And the result is also that they lie on some of the piglets and some of the piglets die. Uh, many thousand piglets die every year. And I think that's also a result of a breeding strategy which, which has some problems for the animal welfare. And I think uh, this is a similar issue. So I would like uh, to ask you, um, if we are to change the breeding strategy, how do you see the perspectives for that? How, fa how fast can we do it? Do you, do you know anything about the economic consequences? Because as, as Dionis Beskuttels also said, this is of course an economic strategy to have small hens and big eggs, so we don't have to spend so much time on or money on food and, and, and so on. Um, but I'm very happy that you uh, are aware of this and have it on your radar. And I hope that we can find some solutions together. Thank you. Thank you very much, Nils uh, Fulksan. And I think I will give the floor back to uh, Kirsten von Hagen. But uh, of course, uh, Mia Bonixen, you can also react. But uh, I think it was mainly addressed to the Commission. Please. <laughs> Yes, thank you. So you would like me to, to reply directly to, to the questions and not to collect, right? Okay, uh, that's fine. Is that fine for you? Okay. Yeah, yeah, for me it's fine, as, as you like, no problem. Okay. Um, well, um, coming to the question, yes, we, we are certainly aware. The Danish study uh, certainly uh, raised the point, but we were also before that point aware of uh, breeding issues. And the, the example that you mentioned about piglets and the number of piglets and sows is also known to us. So, um, as I said, we, we are looking at, at this in the context of the revision and uh, about economic, to, to start with that question first, 
about economic consequences, um, any option that we uh, discuss and foresee um, to uh, address in the revision of the legislation will be subject to the impact assessment or to an impact assessment. And uh, sure, there will be economic consequences, but uh, how they will look like and about the annual value, this is something uh, which I cannot uh, name right now. Um, concerning the timeline, I also agree, any change in breeding issues takes time. Um, for the moment, this study, the, the uh, study, the Danish study, um, says it is likely that uh, the uh, keel bone fractures are a result of breeding strategies. Um, they may also be influenced by other issues. And there may also be a possibility to address this um, coming from the legislative point of view to address this by uh, setting requirements. I mean, just for example, to say the onset of lay shall not be before a certain age. <coughs> Sorry. Um, so these things are also looked at in the, in the legislation and uh, requirements can be set into our proposal and then it depends on how long it takes to have it adopted and uh, when to apply. But um, also, as I said, we are in, the, in constant exchange with the breeding companies and they are also aware of this. So um, this needs to be addressed by the, um, by the companies if they intend to do so. And then uh, for poultry, since they have a fairly quick uh, reproduction cycle, this would be a matter of, uh, I don't know, let's say a, a couple of years, more or less a few years, going into um, animals which have a longer reproduction cycle, like cattle, for example, this would take much longer. Um, and the pigs are somewhere in between. So if there is any decision taken on changing breeding strategies, it will certainly take a couple of years to have it implemented. But uh, again, legislation and uh, laying down additional requirements uh, could possibly facilitate this and uh, see that uh, results are seen quicker. I hope this replies to your question. Thank you. Thank you very much. And um, I give the floor to the next MEP. I, I saw also the questions in the Q&A. I will come to them too, but I first wanted to give the floor to the uh, members of the parliament to react and uh, to come with their questions, but the other ones, I have them on the screen. Uh, Anja, please. Yes, thank you, Tilly. Uh, um, and thank both speakers for their excellent presentations. Uh, I have a question for um, uh, Kirsten von Hagen. Uh, in, the, in the last century, the breeding, uh, breeding, strate breeding strategies uh, uh, for farm animals are solely focused on increasing production. And this combined with intensive housing systems and mutilations uh, lead to severe animal welfare problems. Um, well, the, the parliament uh, recognized this and says that, uh, 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 said recently that the animals should no longer be adapted to the system, but that the system should change in, uh, in a way to fulfill the animal needs and behavioral needs and uh, uh, physical needs. And it was not, it, it is similar question than the, than the one that uh, Niels raised uh, before. Uh, in your presentation, you talk about addressing and, and gathering data and uh, that it is on, on uh, uh, something that you, you uh, are aware of, but uh, lack uh, the, the data uh, for the legis new legislative uh, uh, proposals. And I, I'm just wondering, does the commission agree that one of the key factors impacting the welfare of farmed animals and especially chicken 
um, is the genetic makeup of the breed? And if the answer is yes, and I hope so, uh, how are you how are you going to speed up this process? And how can the parliament help in, uh, you with this? Um, uh, so to make sure that in the new legislation, uh, this will be addressed and this will not only be mentioned and tackled as a problem uh, uh, so that we, we can solve this. And I hope that you can, can say something about this. And especially because, well, of course, we, we need to lower the production as well. We need to uh, change housing systems. And I'm very happy that you are going to ban the cages and I hope the sooner the better. Uh, but but we need the total package, and I hope you can uh, comment on that. Thank you. Yes, dear Mrs. Vonhagen, I give you the floor back. <laughs> yes, thank you. Sorry, I always have to search for the unmute button. <laughs> um, we, uh, well, your question if I understood correctly, is if we agree that genetics, that the genome of an animal is the only um, basis for the welfare of the animals. I, I think this, this needs to be looked at a bit more, uh, let's say, diverse. We all know that not only genetic, but also the phenotype and the surroundings, the environment are important for the welfare of animals, of humans, of uh, any um, living being. So um, the genetics certainly is very important, um, but given that we have certain breeds and given that, that we have certain uh, genetic uh, bases, uh, this is something that we, have to look at and we have to see also the require the uh, sorry the surrounding and the the environment <clears throat> so we will look at the whole as you said as at the whole package we will look at any issues which uh, need to be tackled in the context of animals but we don't have all data available yet and um we have the Danish study now coming to the keel bone fractures, but we know that there's, uh, there are also some open questions and data and to lay down something in legislation always needs to have really profound data, scientific evidence. This is uh, a scientific study, um, but uh, also looking at this in a more broad context and uh, more EU wide. So this is why I said the Commission considers that more research on this and more data are needed, but we will certainly look at this and uh, in the context of, of the revision. Um, we are at the moment still under the evaluation of the current legislation. We are collecting um, the, uh, the opinions and the, the wishes of anybody who's interested and we are doing the impact assessment. So for the moment, we are really open to, to anything and uh, we, we will look into this um, also. I see a hand raised from uh, Manuela Riba and somewhere I saw a message, but I cannot find it anymore from you to Gutelan. But uh, if she's there, uh, of course, uh, she can raise her hand. But uh, yes, she is there because uh, I think you wrote some there. And it, well, I give the floor to Manuela and then to Jutta, please. Is that OK? Manuela, please. Thank you very much, Tilly, for giving me the floor. Um, I have a question, or I have rather two questions to the Commission. Um, the first one is, um, I'm in an international uh, trade committee of the European Parliament, and that is why I would like to ask about the global dim dimension in the upcoming animal welfare legislation. 
If we really want to have more animal welfare, we need to act not only at the European level, but also at the global level. And the current French presidency of the Council showed its support to include more ambitious import conditionalities to EU equivalent standards and trade agreements. This is initiative is called Mirror Measures. Now my question, will the Commission include mirror measures on animal welfare in the upcoming legislation? Meaning, will the Commission apply the same requirements regarding the selection of animal breeds when it comes to imports of products such as eggs or chicken meat to ensure a level playing field for European producers and in order to ensure that animal, EU animal welfare standards will not be undermined by imports. And my second question is on breeding, um, because we just raised the breeding issues of uh, pigs. Um, and um, it, comes, it came to my knowledge that um, hormones of female horses are needed to have industrial pork production. That ensures that sows becomes pregnant on time. These hormones are obtained in a cruel way that is similar to torture to female horses. Um, what can you say? Um, on this breeding method? And will you tackle such horrible breeding methods in the upcoming legislation? Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Manuela, also to you. And I give the floor back to the commission. But of course, uh, if uh, Mia Borinson wants to uh, react, feel, feel free to, to do so. Um, yeah, important questions on the, on, on the Miro uh, regulation that we need to have and on this, uh, uh, what um, hormones from uh, horses to be used for the breeding of souls. Yeah, please. Yes, thank you. Um, coming to the first question, we are certainly looking also into imports and into international trade. Um, there are different options uh, that can be uh, looked at in this context um, to have equivalent measures or to perhaps apply a labeling system. So uh, we have in the impact assessment uh, different options and we, we are waiting for the evaluation. So the commission is um, discussing and suggesting, uh, so, um, considering, <laughs> sorry, um, different possibilities. We know that uh, trade, international trade, is very important for the EU and uh, that imports are also very important also for, for our market. Um, so I can uh, just repeat what I said before. This is something that we know, that we are aware of and that we, uh, that we look at, as I said, the different options. For the moment, there's no, no decision being taken how to do this. Um, concerning the breeding of horses and the, um, um, the, um, how to get the hormones to, for, for the sows and also for other animals, um, we have breeding requirements within the EU. And we have keeping requirements for horses as well in the EU um, for animal welfare reasons and for other reasons as well. Um, as regards importing these products from third countries, also this is something that we are aware of and that the commission is uh, discussing and exchanging on. So uh, this is an ongoing issue. Um, as I said, about uh, what's going on in non-EU member states and uh, about how to address this in the legislation here as well. I, can, I cannot say something uh, certain for the moment, um, but uh, we are open for, for everything. But just to mention as well, we said that uh, all the legislative proposals will be based on scientific evidence. So uh, we would need to have EFSA opinions. And in this context, I, I, um, in my presentation, I showed you the, the EFSA opinions which are currently being looked at, but we have also um, sent a roadmap to EFSA, a roadmap uh, listing a number of species, a number of mandates, which we are going to address 
in the future and uh, after the 2023 proposal. So for the moment, we have to concentrate on, on these issues, but we know there are a number of species where we are missing scientific uh, opinions and uh, we will tackle them later on. And equines, for example, are listed in this roadmap uh, for mandates to be sent to EFSA. Yes, uh, as I understood, uh, it's. I, I think a journalist uh, also asked me, but maybe there are some people in our group here who have more information, but the thing about the blood extracted from horses is inside even Europe. Huh? I, I, as far as I remember, it's uh, in Scotland that horses are raised for that and then in order that the pigs uh, indeed get uh, pregnant on the right moment. It's, uh, I don't know the exact procedure, but I think it's really about a European issue here. Manuela, you wanted to, to ask something uh, on that. Uh, yeah, please go ahead and then Jutta has the floor. Yeah, indeed, I wanted to highlight uh, also that, yes, it was used in South Africa, um, but now they um, uh, had problems and that, that's why they use uh, uh, island, island ponies. So it's, it's something that is done here in, in, the, in the EU and it's um, really a cruelty. And um, I don't think that we can wait until 2023 to tackle this issue, but we need to de do it much faster. I mean, is the commission, and sorry that I have to ask here again, is the commission um, looking closely at this and is the commission doing something at EU level and not um, also only on, on imports? Um, taking blood and, and taking blood to get medicinal products or veterinary drugs and so on, uh, this is always an, um, for, for um, uh, what's the expression? It, it falls under the, the rules, the European rules for experimental animals and for medicinal products. So this is under close um, um, observation and uh, inspection of the competent authorities. So um, in principle, I'm quite sure, but uh, that this is known and uh, that this is su supervised. But uh, I would not be able to say that this is a procedure which is not allowed under European legislation. But um, yeah, if you, if you have further information on this, I'm pretty certain that the colleagues uh, really know about this, but um, for animal welfare reasons, um, this, yeah, this needs to be looked at also by the competent authorities and is under the, the rules as they are right now. Okay, thank you very much. Maybe I will come back to you on this uh, bilaterally. And of course I can let the whole group know about um, the outcomes. Yes, thank you. sure. Thank you, Manuela. I know it's good to have raised it up. It is not there, it's not linked to hands, but it's linked to selective breeding. So I think uh, uh, it, it's, it's, it's good to raise the, the question uh, here. Jutta, you have the floor, please. <laughs> Thank you very much. And excuse me if there is some noise uh, uh, in the background. I hope you can hear me. Uh, first of all, thank you, Ms. Bonishen, for your excellent presentation and also for the commission's uh, answers. Uh, I, I wonder a bit about uh, the situation for the hens and how, I mean, as I, I completely agree that it, it must be spread, this uh, problem. It cannot be a Danish uh, uh, situation. It, it seems only like you have better information. Uh, but uh, I wonder how come it, it has been quite silent about it, or maybe it's just me being ignorant to a problem because I, I didn't hear a lot about this. And therefore I wonder, do the farmers know about it? Is this uh, something that uh, you see or can they be unaware of the suffering? And, um, and then also um, uh, to the commission, uh, have you been aware and uh, um, on this, um, 
uh, roadmap uh, is uh, maybe I missed it, but is this one of the um, is is this on the roadmap? Are you going to to propose something here? Maybe I missed it because I switched the visor. Uh, so maybe you actually said it, uh, but it seemed as I also heard from colleagues, extremely important that we we tackle this and that we get more knowledge, but also that we don't delay. And uh, so it needs to be in in the action plan. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh... Um, Jutte Gutteland, um, yeah, who wants, maybe I give the floor, the floor to Mia Bonixen and then back to the commission, if that is okay. Yes, thank you for the questions. I think there was a lot of questions, so. Uh, forgive me if I don't get to, uh, fractures is not new actually. Um, for example, in Denmark, we had it at the action plan back in 2015 to be investigated more in Denmark. Um, a lot of uh, scientists have revealed uh, investigations of keelbone fractures all around uh, the world. I think the new here is uh, that the cores have been uh, proposed as being the size of the eggs and the hands in this mismatch. Um, a lot of other causes have been proposed earlier, like a trauma to the hands and uh, feeding uh, because of the need the calcium for the eggs and a lot of others. I, I need to stress I'm not a scientist, so it's just what I have been uh, uh, reading about. Um, but um, I think uh, as you ask about the farmers, uh, when we also talked to the farmers here in Denmark, and I think they were shocked about the high numbers. And as it is, it's not uh, with the knowledge now uh, obvious to the farmers uh, which hens have these fractures in their houses. Uh, so, so they can't see it, as we know, uh, on their daily routines now. So. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, I give the floor back to the commission, to Mrs. Uh, von Hagen. Yes, thank you. Um, I'm not 100% sure if I understand the question uh, you asked about the roadmap and uh, that this needs to be on the action plan. Do I understand correctly that you refer to the keel bone fractures to the Danish study? Okay, um, well, the roadmap that I was mentioning before is a roadmap for mandates to be sent to EFSA. Um, this, this is not really a roadmap on how to look at breeding issues and the same for the action plan. We don't have a specific action plan on this, but we we have this, let's say, on our agenda for the uh, for the revision of legislation, and uh, for the animal welfare legislation, and also uh, for let's say the normal work apart from the legislation. So we are in in close contact with the breeding um, um, sector. And uh, we, we are, have this on our agenda to, to have more research on, for example, in the context of Horizon Europe. So if you call this an action plan, maybe it is, but we don't call it, we, we don't have a specific action plan for this, but we have actions on this, yes. I wanted to go a little bit in the same direction than, than you to. Uh, I was wondering, seeing uh, that it's um, really a big issue and that uh, probably a lot of laying hands are concerned and that it is really coming uh, with a lot of pain. Are there, is there the possibility at the commission level, because for me it's an emergency. I mean, a lot of sentient being, as we clearly say in the, in the treaty, those are sentient beings and they are suffering. Are there not a possibility from the commission like an emergency procedure so that we can stop it earlier? I, I imagine standing here or sitting here or, or all the time with a, with a broken leg. In, in, I mean, it must really hurt. And is there not an emergent procedure that we can stop there? When and it is obvious that sentience being uh, are suffering. Uh, I, I, I'm thinking myself in where, where should we find that at the commission level, um, a regulation that so that we can intervene immediately by saying, no, 
this we have to stop and we have to stop it immediately. And then of course we do the needed studies in, in general in order to uh, have better animal welfare. But what can we do now in such emergency cage, ca cases? Hmm. Um, we, um, well, first of all, we have to act on, on legal grounds and we don't have a legal basis for such emergency um, action, asking farmers, asking member states, asking anybody concerned to, to change things drastically. Um, what we do is that we, that we uh, talk with people and that we inform them. Um, member states can always act on this. But what is also known is that early onset of lay can be can be can be amended. I mean, the laying hens don't need to lay at a certain very young age. Age. Um, this is also a matter to to look at when when we talk about pullets, about young laying hens, which are not yet laying hens. Um, they can be uh, handled in a way that they start laying later. And this could already be a possibility to, to reduce the problem. But also for this, um, this has been done in some areas, in some member states, but um, this is not for the commission to act on for the moment because we would need really solid, more solid, more wide data on this. But as I said, this is definitely something we, we look at in the context of the revision of the legislation. Thank you very much. And I see we have only one minute left. I just wanted to say we have, I see three questions, uh, no, four, pardon. Uh, there is also a remark now from uh, Francisco Guerrero, um, who cannot unfortunately be present, but I see there are also three questions that were raised, good questions, of course, and I will suggest that we will answer them by written. So there is the first question uh, more related to references. Uh, second question that was from Annika Lang, more uh, how can we reach the big breeding companies indeed, uh, in order that uh, um, that something happens maybe also in, in a short term. Um, voila, and then Andreas Manz from Focus, who is also, thank you very much for the presentation he writes, um, dual purpose breeds in broiler sector, could this also solve the debate? Okay, so we take in account all these questions that were uh, raised, and I think we try, uh, Andreas, I'm looking up Andreas Erla to, to, to write them down and to answer by, written to those uh, questions. So uh, for me, the time is unfortunately over. I would really like also to thank Neil Fulksang that we tackled this issue because it was his idea. So thank you very much. And of course, thank you very much to Mrs. Von Hagen and also to Mrs. Bunningsen for their excellent uh, presentation and that uh, to all of you for your very uh, good questions. So have a very nice day, take care and uh, looking forward to see you in the next Animal Welfare Inter Group. See you. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you. Bye. The recording has stopped.